this is everybody's day this is everybody's day we need to get out of your father's house and that suggests inheritance that beyond the physical inheritance there are patterns in the bloodline maybe in your family as a young man everybody that marries has two ladies outside and when we say ah, ah say you have married this one why are you hanging out with this one you will tell us see see it's not me oh. that's how all the males in my family are you will need to also walk out of your father's house you will break camp with the negative patterns of your bloodline because god is bidding you to come to a place if you do it successfully what it will produce out of you is a great nation it means you will not be a single man consecrated you'll be a company of consecrated men that was the promise to abraham abraham's obedience was actually going to be gifted the consequence of the birth of a consecrated nation you know why life was hard as we had for the last one year it's because the last one year was the year of jubilee in israel and if you study scriptures the average jew only labors for six years he rests on the seventh year right in that seventh year it has been found that the seventh year of rest of israel natural israel till today always falls into the year of recession in the world because when they are resting the world is crying so you will invest in the year of recession and lose your investment but the jew will be eating the harvest of the sixth year because it will be twofold the effect becomes worse on global economy when you now come to a year of jubilee because the year of jubilee is called this year of the seven of sevens it means after 49 years seven years of rest you now combine the effect of those seven years and dump them in the final year actually in israel if you are owing money in the year of jubilee you forgo the debt so if you invested money it means the one to whom you invested the money is no longer owing you so many investments die in the year of jubilee it's natural israel but their template existence is still affecting everybody one of the reasons why we need an accurate president in nigeria next year is because nigeria is a t1 year a t1 country it means whatever happens in the most developed countries will happen in nigeria after one year if they had recession in uk this year it means next year is our own allocated year ethiopia is a t20 year a t20 nation it means the effect of this last year it will last in ethiopia and we mature after 20 years we're going to save africa the hope of africa is a company of consecrated men that's our only hope because everywhere god sees consecration he invests power this was what god had in mind for choosing abraham so that everyone in israel was supposed to show up as a priest like we read a chosen generation a royal priesthood a consecrated people a holy nation a peculiar people and the assignment is to show that god is greater than every other one what israel was in the natural sphere the church is in the spirit every one of us is supposed to be a priest whether you are colored or not colored whether you are titled or not titled I used to tell our sisters in our ministry in Obomosho, don't marry a man because he has money. The greatest thing a man should be able to, to, to flash when he comes seeking your hand in marriage is the strength of his priesthood. Yeah. If you marry a poor man, if his priesthood is strong, you'll still be comfortable. Because when me I married my wife, I didn't have money. I could not even afford a rechargeable lamp. I, I dwelt with candles. I share with them on Sunday. And do they know what a genuine candle looks like? They were looking like themselves. They don't even know that they are fake candles. How many of you know that they are fake candles? If you light it once, in five minutes, all the wax is on the table. I used candles to a point that I could recognize a fake candle without touching it. Now, oh, 
This one is fake. That's how poor I was. Uh, everything in my house that my wife met was given. My chair, my bed, the wood, even the foam was given. I had a fridge, but it was given. In one of the rooms, I had a box TV. It was given. When it spoiled, we started changing the fuse. After a while, the fuse did not work again. So, we abandoned it. So, I didn't have a TV. I didn't have a generator. My wife brought our first TV. She brought our generator. It was her coming that made the house look good. I was living in a room and parlor. And then I moved into a two-bedroom. She was staying in a three-bedroom. And she had everything that the house should have. Because her dad was wealthy. But she decided to walk away. And when she looked at me, what do I stand to gain? I said, I will put your name on the map of every nation. Follow me. One day you will be proud that you are an Abola. And it's, it's just that they happen. That's the only thing. And it was not because I had money. Ah! I knew that the destiny of a man who has found the Holy Ghost cannot be calculated. Say, just follow me. She said, ah, ah, so when, we, when I'm pregnant now, how are we going to be going to the hospital? Are we going to be riding bike? I said, before you come, the car will come. And it came as a gift. Two months to our wedding, we had a very terrible issue with the, the actual part of the car. And she said, ah, so how would we go? I said, God, we do it. And the ones who gave the first one came visiting. How is your car? Says with the mechanic who's been there for a while. Okay, tell them to patch it and return it. And the day I drove it to them, there was another car parked. Take this one and go and be driving it. Now, when my wife comes with a need, and I say, this woman, you are not even thinking where I will get the money. Her response is, she is you. She's saying, it looks as if you have found a way into the vault of God. If there is a need, the supply will come. That's how we live now. So sisters, beyond shiny shoes and shiny suits and fine ties, please look for the man's priesthood. Try to rehearse a problem and see how he will solve it. Maybe he will say mommy or, or he will say rest. I came home after our son was three months. My wife and, and I asked her in the middle of the night, did you have a dream recently? She said yes. What did you see? She said she saw her baby. He was not sitting up that time. Suddenly, sit up in the middle of the night and he began to cough blood. Huh? What did you do? She said, eh, I prayed over him. You prayed over him and you left it there. Give me the baby. So grab the baby, rushed into the city room, lifted him up to God and prayed for about five minutes. We woke up the next morning to the news that somebody somewhere was already paralyzed. No, you don't come that close. The enemy is not threatened by our numbers. What he fears is a company of consecrated men. If you drop one in every church, it will not come close. If all the members are now consecrated, the enemy will move out of town. I was saying in my last meeting in town, how that a story was told of the, the apostle, Ayo Babalola, walking with a few of his boys into a town for a crusade. They were just singing, you know, in low tones into a town. And their entrance coincided with the worship of a deity. It was a wooden deity, very potent. So potent that four men carried the deity on their shoulder, like the Ark of Covenant, and they were worshipping to it. The people were dancing to it. All of a sudden, the men who carried the wooden thing had to throw the thing away and they, they ran. They ran because the priests of the deity ran. And when the priests were caught. They asked them, why did you run? They said, we don't know that man. But as, he's up, as he was approaching, we discovered that the spirit inside the deity ran. <laughs> and so if the spirit has left the deity, so you'll be carrying it. They had not started the crusade. It was an approach. A consecrated man is a weapon in motion. Ah! Help me live according to my ordination. Can we pray for five minutes? Help me live. Or maybe three minutes. So that we can round up. Help me live according to my ordination. 
we were ordained to be consecrated Gifts unto God. Gifts unto God.